Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry about the slightly delayed start. You know, the wonders of modern technology and romance. Um, welcome to this evening's Respire meeting. Brought to you courtesy of the uh, BCS Open Source Group. Uh, and also the UK Open Highway as well. Uh, I'm Phil Hartley. I'll be your host for this evening. And, um, this event's been live streamed, yes. It's been live streamed. I, I wondered about the problems we've had. And um, it'll be later to be made available on YouTube. Okay, we've got a great line to speak to you this evening. Uh, but before we launch into all that, I'll just give a brief overview of the agenda. Uh, we'll start with a short, just a short introductory presentation uh, from me. <laughs> Cursing <laughs> to Mr. Evans. <Redmond. laughs> uh, then we will have uh, Tommy and Van Nick, who's going to talk about the Chips Alliance project. Uh, we'll go to Talk to George Gray about open source hardware, things open source software. Then Morton, Boris Peterson, talk about rights, uh, which is uh, more what I understand, the uh, method of teaching computer architecture visualization. Um, we'll always we'll wrap about 8 o'clock, uh, and then we'll be some network planning here down the pub until 9 o'clock. Okay, so let's start with the uh, introductory presentation. Right, first of all, we're going to we're going to take a trip down memory lane and we're going to have a look at some of the highlights of developments in process architecture over the last 40 years. Starting with the uh, 1980s. Back then there was uh, a very interesting debate, a very lively debate between rival architectures, which was the best architecture, was it complex instruction set architecture, KISS, or reduced instruction set architecture, RISC. And the winner of that battle was complex instruction set architecture. Um, winner, at least in the market, market share and market share sense. Uh, there's still, there were still some uh, developments in, in uh, risk, for, risk for architecture at that time, but that laid the foundation, but not laid the foundation for the dominance of the uh, server and desktop uh, market. In the 1990s, uh, designers really began to seriously exploit Moore's, Moore's law. Uh, the, the rule of thumb for that was for any given area of silicon, you would you'd, uh, double the number of transistors every 12 to 18 months relative to cost. So you have more power for processors, uh, less cost. Uh, in parallel, another interesting drama which happened in the 1990s was the, uh, the emergence of ARM, which became very strong in the embedded space. So to a certain day, we have this divergence of the market desktop space and the embedded space. In the 2000s, uh, people started becoming about uh, concerned about uh, the physical limits of, for example, Moore's Law. Uh, there was lots of innovation in mobile, a really key decade for mobile. And it, it was um, Intel launched the Italian processor in 2008 which was the first 2 billion transistor microprocessor. There's still, in terms of risk, there was still some grassroots open calls, which is open risk and open spark. So if we fast forward to today, the challenges are that we've got increasingly diverse computing workloads, and um, the barriers to entry have uh, started to fall. So now we're looking at uh, the, the risk fire specification, which is free, and it's open with extensions, tools, and uh, look, going there. Okay, so how big is this? Well, people are talking in terms of the size of the market for the processors. Uh, chip Outlook is growing to 490 US dollars, billion dollars in 2019. That's a very big number. And uh, a key driver of that is thought to be 5G. Uh, the first main thing there would be how that's combined, how you combine IoT with artificial intelligence for. Um, sectors such as autonomous vehicles. And, oh, I forgot to move my things on. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so these are some of the uh, things which are some of the sectors which are driving process growth. I'm not going to read all of them out. You're probably familiar with most of them. For example, consumer IoT, no devices, automotive, which I already mentioned. And the next one. Again, uh, so what are the problems? What kind of bottlenecks are appearing there? Essentially, the, the old instruction set architectures, which have, some of which have been around for decades, there's perhaps arguably not really up to the job 
uh, the kind of new uh, applications that are coming forward now. Risk five will unlock the architecture and enable innovation. It's open source, it's transparent, and completely free. Okay, this is a nice little slide. It shows, I think, the key objectives or goals of this slide is to create an architecture which is simple, stable, it's very modular, and it's designed for extensibility and specialization. And it started uh, the design of a totally clean site. So, welcome to the Risk Fire Revolution. Uh, behind it, at the heart of this, what's driving is the Risk Fire Foundation, which has been going since uh, 2015, I'm correctly. Uh, that's a non profit entity which is serving members and the industry. Its mission is to accelerate <coughs> Risk Fire adoption with shared benefit to the entire community of stakeholders. And uh, essentially, it's uh, risk five, it's, uh, it is risk five, not risk B, if so people can't mispronounce it. It's an open source hardware instruction set. So it's the interface between hardware and software. It's the set of machine instructions that allows your hardware, to, allows your software, to drive the hardware to do use of work. One uh, interesting feature of it, of course, is the frozen base. The base was frozen in 2014. And that's, uh, that's not going to change. There will be uh, extensions beyond that, which you can design. Which you can, uh, oh, so let's move on to that one. Uh, this, this is really growing, it's really taking off. I'm sure most of you are aware of that now. Uh, these are just some of the announcements uh, which have happened this year. Uh, not, not all of us, quite, quite significant ones as well, in addition to these. I think Red Hat joined several months ago, for example. There's quite a few uh, big things going on. So it's been a really Good year for this fire. Okay, so this is a nice little picture. And already, I don't know when that was done, but I guarantee you it's out of date, really. Yeah, definitely. It's really almost exponential growth, as we will see in a moment. Okay, so, so here's some interesting metrics. Or did I miss that one? Sorry. I said it was exponential growth. It's not quite exponential, but it's sort of starting to hit that kind of side of the curve. Uh, so now we've got more than 350 members in 28 countries around the world. So oh, that's really, really great. Right, so it's some more interesting metrics which show the impact of Risk 5. For example, uh, if you figures there for attendees at 2018 Risk 5 Summit, and uh, the one this year I'm sure will be even bigger than that, it's garnering a lot of press attention. And uh, getting on for, well, probably at now, let's say 9,000 at least by now, LinkedIn followers, uh, well over 9,000 Twitter followers. So it's really causing a stir. <coughs> Essentially, what this slide is saying is that for, if you join the Risk Fire Foundation, if you put a dollar in, you'll get a lot more than a dollar back. Because you can pull um, a lot of your efforts. Uh, with other interested parties, and uh, some, it's, it's always great in some of the past years, uh, Right, so how can you get involved? Lots of ways you can do that. There's something like 20 odd technical uh, focus areas, uh, something in there which is bound to interest you, uh, whether it's security or um, compliance or whatever. You know, lots of scope get involved there. Right, so next thing is meetups. Now, there's now three meetups in the UK that I know of. There's London, Bristol, Cambridge. So it's, there's a growing interest in the UK. <laughs> next up, one interesting feature of um, the Risk 5 uh, English model, if you want to call it that, is the availability of the marketplace. You, know, you can actually Look at what calls have been produced and what the licensing terms are. So that's quite an interesting innovation. Okay, then, then essentially, this is just following on to what I said. You've got a dollar in, you get more than a dollar back. This is the value proposition for members. Uh, essentially, you know, probably the biggest point there is actually the growing ecosystem of collaboration. I think that's probably one of the biggest uh, attractions there. 
and uh, how many join it? Well, there's three membership options. One is premium member, or certainly large organisations, strategic members and community members, member benefits. You can join. Uh, one of the nice things about this is if you work for someone as a company which hasn't quite got the verified message yet, you can still join for free as an individual member. Advocate for risk fire in your organization. Okay, so that's it, folks.